In this video, I'm going to quickly do an unboxing of the Ender 3 3D printer and also a quick assembly. This isn't a complete assembly guide, so it's going to be a very quick video just to give you an idea of what's involved in putting one of these printers together. Uh, some of the things it comes with, this is the control board and uh, all the wiring is, is pre-done. You just hook them in. It's all modular. This is the power supply. It'll work in Asia, Europe, and US. It's 110, 220. Uh, all the parts for the frame are high quality aluminum. They're already pre-drilled and pre-tapped and there's very clear instructions for putting it together. Here's a couple of the motors. Um, most of this is already pre-assembled as well. Um, I would say it's more than 50% pre-assembled. Uh, it comes together in about an hour. Here's the glass print bed. Um, you can either print with glass or just on this print bed here. This is a, it's a heated bed. And I'm just getting into 3D printing so I don't know a whole lot about it, but I figured a sub uh, $200 printer, I paid $165 for this printer in 2019. Uh, so here's some more, here's the aluminum sides. Here's just some of the different hardware that it comes with. It comes with all the tools you need to assemble it. Uh, and you can even start printing right out of the box. It includes a, an SD card that you can just start printing uh, right away without even hooking it to a computer. Here's some extra print nozzles. And I will say they do include a lot of extra hardware, um, extra screws, extra bolts, all kinds of extra things. The instructions were pretty straightforward. Uh, this first step here, we're going to install the sides and it tells us what screws we need to use. So this is what the aluminum sides look like. They're tapped on the top and on the bottom, but they are directional. You can look at the instructions to see which way they go. We'll find the screws. It's very clearly noted. This is the M545 um, screws that we'll be using. They're all hex head, and again, the tools to install these, uh, like Allen wrenches, are included in the box as well. So we install the one side, then I tip it over and install the other side. We'll place it vertically again and move on to step two, which is installing the power supply and the control unit with the screen. Uh, it tells us what screws to use as well, so we'll go ahead and locate those clearly labeled screws and then open them up. Uh, the power supply goes facing down like this with the wires facing down and the holes on the power supply match up with the holes in this right side of the aluminum frame. So we'll put the screws in and then we'll tighten these up and I just speed up the video and kind of cut to those parts. This control board has two uh, holes here that also just mount right into the bottom part of the frame there. I didn't have any trouble. Everything was tapped really well. I didn't have any trouble putting it together. Um, this is, I forget what it's called, is it the Z-axis limit switch. It's a switch so that on the Z-axis it knows exactly when it comes down, it presses this switch so it knows when it's reached the bottom of the Z-axis. And that just gets installed right here on the bottom left-hand side if you're looking straight on. And again, it's all clearly noted in the instructions. Uh, two screws to put this in. The next step uh, is to install the actual Z-axis motor. And that just kind of goes right around the side. Here's the screws for it. This is what the motor looks like. And it just has two holes that you can install uh, to, to put the screws in. So we put it around here on this bottom left-hand side as well. It's sort of on the back side. The next step, uh, this is probably the hardest step of all. So there's these other two aluminum pieces. One is the top. The shorter one is what goes across the top. And this longer one here is the one that we're going to use um, in this next step. So it has a couple different holes and, and some different uh, holes drilled in it. So this part is going to slide on here and it took me a minute to figure it out. But you got to get the right orientation and sort of roll it on here. Then you slide it in and there's two screws that hold it into place. And this is one of three parts that we're going to be putting on this aluminum piece. The next step, we put on the other two pieces. These all just have rolling bearings on them. Um, I guess that's what I'm going to call them anyway. And this is kind of how the piece would go on. But I'm just going to show you that for orientation. This is the print head with the bearings. And it's already all pre-assembled too. I didn't pre-assemble any of this. It already had the, the control wires and everything there. So all I really did is put these other two screws on the side. And now this is one finished piece. We can slide it on these rails on the side here. And it just sort of rolls down for the time being. This is a uh, bearing as well that the belt is going to go on and we put it in the end and we just tighten it with two screws. It's sort of channeled to go in there, these two screws are. Um, next we have to actually install this belt so it'll go on that bearing that we just installed and it sort of wraps around the whole thing. Um, it's easier and maybe it's the only way to do it. You have to take this part off. 
So we take this off and you sort of slide in. There's these copper things that slide in these two grooves here. So you just slide one in, make sure the belt is facing the correct way to engage with the gears. And then I just sort of wrapped it around. It slides inside this channel. It goes completely around uh, over top of this idler bearing on the one side and the actual gear for the motor on the other side. And then on the other side, we just snap it right in or slide it in there. And I didn't have to do any adjustment on this at all, a tightening or anything. It was already just perfect and everything worked well. So, But there are adjustment screws. You can tighten and loosen it if you want to. Or I forgot to mention, there's a pair of these cutters too, which are really nice uh, for cutting the filament. So this threaded rod needs to go in that motor for our Z-axis that was sort of around behind on the left-hand side. And it just threads in right here. So we'll just thread it in until it touches that uh, Z-axis motor. And then the Z-axis motor has two uh, hex bolts in it or hex heads. We'll just tighten those in. Uh, and then when that turns, it'll raise the Z-axis up and down. So this next part is just the top. We place it on, we get the right screws and just screw it down. Oh, it also has these end caps just for decorative. They go off and they're just plastic. They just finish off the ends. Here's the screws for the top there. And again, there's just four of them. Uh, it's very solid. Um, I carry mine from the top here. The whole frame is very solid when you get it all tightened down. It doesn't. Mine doesn't have any play or any movement to it at all. We'll put these uh, decorative side end caps in. And then the final construction step is just putting on this plastic part with a metal and then with the plastic part for the spool. And it just attaches right on the top here. Um, we attach this part in first and it's just sort of where the, the spool of filament uh, will be while it's printing. And then there's two screws that we can use to screw it right to the top of the machine here. And then the last step I don't have a video of, but it's just hooking up all of the wires. And this is just a little quick time lapse of my first print um, I, I didn't. I did a little bit of bed lev leveling, um, but it just printed off pretty well. And this is what the print looks like. And again, this is one of three uh, test sample designs that comes with the Ender 3. Hopefully you found this video informative. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.